small business owner and welcome back to ECS Payments. Today, we're going to be diving into a topic that is essential for most every entrepreneur, how to price your services, a formula. Whether you're selling products or services, knowing how to set your prices is crucial. So let's dive right in. Some small businesses sell products, some sell services, and some sell both. But how do you price something that's as intangible as time, effort, and experience? Do you charge by the hour? Do you charge by the value that you provide? These are just some of the questions that we will answer in today's video. Business owners have many responsibilities, from creating policies, to hiring the right staff, to legal complexities, to making sure the business stays afloat. But one of the biggest responsibilities is ensuring that they set the right prices. Unlike products, services can't rely on fixed production costs. Inflation affects product prices over time, but business owners can adjust their prices as this happens. However, service-based pricing is a little bit trickier. You may have estimated a certain time frame for your project or a certain resource usage, only to come to some surprises. Part of the problem is that there's no original cost to work with. You're not holding some tangible item in your inventory that costs X amount of dollars. Just a song in your heart, a pep in your step, and lots of knowledge on how to teach a seminar, give a massage, fix electrical issues, etc. True, you've got some years of experience behind you, and you've probably also invested in some certifications, degrees, seminars, or apprenticeships. And indeed, these expenses can be built into your pricing, but it's a little wishy-washy. So we're back to our original question. How do you price your services as a freelancer, contractor, or any service-based business? Now let's break down the factors to consider when you're pricing your services. Number one, uniqueness. First, how special and unique are the services that you offer? Rarity and uniqueness in your area can afford you to charge more for your services. And the higher in demand your services are, the more you can charge. But if you offer the same thing as Terry down the street, you need to either lower your prices to become the more affordable option for your clients, or you need to go a step above and offer something more unique than Terry does. So for example, let's say you and Terry down the street are both photographers, but you want to offer makeup and a venue for your services. That means you're offering more, which costs more, which means you get to charge more. But let's say you don't wanna spend more on products and you just wanna offer more to your services. Well, you can offer in-person pre-shoot consultations, 30 minutes extra of shooting time, or an extra 50 photos in your client's digital gallery. Offering those unique services to your package means you can charge more than Terry down the road. Number two, the local competition. In a similar vein, you need to research and assess local competition in your area. What are similar businesses charging for their services in your specific location? Remember, pricing can vary significantly based on location and demand. So. Let's keep Terry on the table for a second. You and Terry both live on the same street, let's say in Florida, and you both offer the same service, photography. You both don't have all the extra stuff that we mentioned above, but you both have the same styling and editing techniques. So you're both on the same playing field when it comes to pricing. But let's say Terry moves to Oklahoma and you move to LA. Your locations just change the game because cost of living is so much different in both of these places. Terry now has to lower her cost of services based on pricing in her area, and you can increase yours based on LA pricing. Number three, the cost of living. The cost of living in your location definitely plays a role into your pricing. Your direct and indirect costs, such as your working space, tools, equipment, and even commute should be factored in. So how much time do you spend on your business based on your location? Number four, payroll and personal expenses. Now, don't forget your personal expenses. How much do you need to make to cover your living costs? Your pricing should ensure that you're not just breaking even, but that you're thriving, especially after making payroll, if you have any employees you have to pay. Number five, Charging for value. Lastly, consider charging for the value that you provide, not just your time. Are your services a luxury or a necessity? Do your clients want your services or do they need your services? Either way, you are providing value. If you're a plumber, your services are essential. And if you offer full service spa packages, you're more of a luxury, but your clients want them. The good news is, People who want luxury services will pay the price for it. 
and those who need essential services have to pay for it. Either way, don't sell yourself short, but remember to assess your location, your competition, and the economy. As a business owner, time is money. Consider using a reliable payment processor to streamline your transactions, saving you time and preserving your profit margin. And there you have it, small business owners, a formula to help you price your services effectively. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all approach, but by understanding your market, expenses, and the value that you provide, you can set prices that offer you a better profit margin and keep your clients coming back. Thank you so much for tuning in. For more information, visit us at ECS Payment Com. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more helpful tips and tricks for your business. And share with any fellow business owners that might find this helpful. Until next time, I'm Shanna with ECS Payments.